In this video, we're talking about severe weather and possible tornadoes in the Great Lakes region. Also, we're looking at the medium range models to see what's happening over the US over the next couple weeks or so. Then we have to look at the tropics as things are really starting to heat up. Welcome back y'all, Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. I am finally back home safe and sound after a couple weeks of a lot of travel. It started out with a storm chase in Wisconsin with that rare moderate risk that we had. We chased a strong line of very severe thunderstorms from northern Wisconsin all the way to Madison, Wisconsin near the southern part of the state. And right there in Madison, where our hotel was, we intercepted that line of storms as it became tornado warned. Then I made the long drive back to Kentucky, picked up my family, and we went on a little mini vacation in Folly Beach, South Carolina. It was Echo's first time ever seeing the beach or the ocean or anything, and he's only six months old, so he didn't think much about it, but it was fun to see. And also, I got to do a funny little uh, golf cart storm chase one day with one of the rental golf carts we had down there. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. I made a little joke video about it, and it's on my Facebook page if you want to see that. So yeah, clock a lot of interstate travel over the past couple weeks and I am happy to be home and just sitting here in the weather room and talking to you guys about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on right now. We have some rain showers moving through Illinois and Indiana into Kentucky. Uh, that spreads all the way back up into Wisconsin, maybe even some light showers there in the upper peninsula of Michigan. And it's this area, especially around Chicago today, that's going to experience some severe weather, okay? We got a slight risk from the Storm Prediction Center with a 5% chance of tornadoes, which is actually a pretty elevated chance for this area. But as of right now, as I'm filming this, we just got some scattered general thunderstorms storms out there uh, and, and this big blob of rain that's moving through Indiana into Kentucky will continue to produce some rain from Cincinnati to Lexington all the way into portions of Southern Ohio and maybe even portions of West Virginia later today, but that's going to be below severe limits for the most part. What we're really focused on today is the Northern Illinois area and then tomorrow, the, the vast majority of the Great Lakes region, we can talk more about that on the weather models. All right, we're starting off with the NAM three kilometer model. As you can see, we've kind of switched from the HRRR to the NAM here this summer. Uh, during the spring, the HRRR model did a really good job of tracking these thunderstorms and, you know, whether or not we were going to see supercell thunderstorms and depicting the mode of the storms. Uh, but it seems like the HRRR just really sucks now. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but the NAM 3 kilometer model is a much better model to look at when we're looking at the composite reflectivity type, which is what we're doing right here. Okay. So we're going to try to use this as a simulated radar to see where the storms are going to go uh, today and tomorrow. So let's check it out. We've got the time up here on the uh, top of the screen, 12 p.m. noon into 1 p.m. today, you're going to see uh, that a lot of this rain out here is going to clear out, okay? And actually, we need that to happen. If you if you, if you want to see the severe weather, if you're a storm chaser out there and you want to see the severe weather, you want to see some clear skies today before the storms pop up. It's kind of unlikely that that happens because there is so much morning convection right now. There's going to be a lot of just leftover cloud cover out there. We really need to see that burn up if we're going to see storms form. Now, if you live out here and you don't want to see severe weather, look outside right now. Is it cloudy? That's a good sign. And then you can also see this big area of precipitation is going to be moving across the Ohio River into Kentucky. Once again, uh, from Louisville, Cincinnati to Lexington, there might be a slight area uh, where we see some gusty winds and some small hail, but the further east this goes, the less intense it's going to become. So once again, we're focusing in on this area right here where that slight risk of severe weather is today. You can see right here around 5 p.m., we're going to have some big storms form up in southeastern Wisconsin near Milwaukee. Uh, those are not going to be what we're really looking at today. What we're really looking at is on the southeastern side of that circulation. We got a low pressure system up here. We got a little trough right here. What we're looking at is right here, okay? So you can see these tiny little storms that are popping up in northwestern Illinois, north of I-88 there, okay? It don't look like much right now on this NAM three kilometer radar, but I'm telling you, that's what we got to watch out for today because uh, if this actually happens in this way and we get isolated storms popping up in the beginning stages of this storm system, we're going to see the very real possibility for a tornado or two. Obviously, this isn't looking like a widespread tornado outbreak kind of day, but this is one of the most impressive overall kinematic setups I've seen for a tornado in this area in a little while, or at least this year, which isn't saying much, but you know, bear with me here. Uh, if you live in Northern Illinois, be on alert today for severe weather, large hail, damaging winds, but definitely uh, make sure you have a way of getting tornado warnings because I do expect we might see one or two today. Uh, so let's keep pushing this forward. As you can see, <laughs> it doesn't look like much here. The NAM isn't really picking up on how much convection there could possibly be, but I'm telling you right now, if we get an isolated supercell thunderstorm popping up here, especially uh, between the hours of uh, you know 5 p.m. to midnight tonight, uh, we could see a tornado there. And outside of the tornado threat, once again, we're talking about damaging winds and hail uh, being the general threat out here. And then very quickly, as those storms get past Chicago and as they move south of I-80 there in Illinois, we're going to quickly see this turn 
into a straight line damaging wind event as this kind of a big outflow boundary uh, racks up all that convective energy and then kind of uh, fizzles out by 1 a.m. tonight. Okay, so the uh, severe weather threat today is really small. It covers a small area. It does include the Chicagoland area. It includes Ottawa, Illinois, pretty much everybody above Interstate 80 and right past it. Um, uh, because once the supercell threat is over, the general wind and hail threat here is not going to be too bad. And as you can see, it's going to fizzle out before it gets to St. Louis pretty much. Now we're looking at the 850 millibar wind speeds. Okay. And this is one of the reasons why I think we have a pretty decent chance of seeing a tornado or two today. You can clearly see a trough here. Okay. And uh, this kind of situation doesn't happen a lot up here. And when it does, and we get a little bit of intense winds on the southeastern side of that trough in combination with a lot of convective energy and a lot of convection in general, we typically see a tornado or two. Okay. So uh, watch, watch the southeastern part of this trough as we move it to the east. It really tries to kick up there around the time that those storms pop up. Look here, 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m. There are little pockets uh, where we could see that lower level jet stream uh, spiking up past 50 knots. Okay. And anything past 40 knots is kind of concerning when it comes to tornadoes, especially if you have uh, isolated supercells. Uh, but in this case, where it looks like that is a possibility, if those supercells can interact with this lower level jet stream and we have a lot of surface winds that are coming uh, from the southeast, it, you get that combination. We're definitely going to see some spin there. Uh, once again, maybe we won't see a lot of tornadoes, but we definitely will see some rotating storms out here. Uh, and even just those by themselves can end up causing a lot of damaging wind problems. So, uh, you know, just pay attention to the radar today if you live up in Northern Illinois. Now I've been talking about how the slight risk area is pretty small today. Well, it's pretty big tomorrow. The day two slight risk is covering a large area as you can see. And let me show you why, okay? As we get into 10 a.m. tomorrow, we're gonna have this little area of convection moving through Northwestern Wisconsin near Rice Lake there. It's gonna ride down the interstate towards uh, Eau Claire and Madison. And at this point, there might be a, you know, some severe threat here, maybe some large hail, some gusty winds. But really what we're looking for here is as we enter the heating of the day, 3 p.m. here, Tuesday, August 10th, we are going to see this turn into a straight line damaging wind threat and probably a very significant one. So once again, here uh, near Chicago, Northern Illinois, Southeastern Wisconsin, uh, you got to be on high alert again tomorrow for possibly a more significant severe weather threat as these storms look like they're going to be causing some big time winds as they race down uh, towards uh, Illinois. Okay. So here we are 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m. right here going through Chicago. Now, uh, this is the classic definition of a bow echo, the beginning stages of a possible derecho. I hate throwing that word around, but like it's possible. It's possible that we get a derecho out of this storm. It just depends on how long it lasts, the distance that it travels and how fast the winds are uh, in its most intense, uh, you know, stages of itself. So right here from South Central Wisconsin, all the way into Northeastern Illinois, across Lake Lake Michigan here, we could possibly be seeing uh, some widespread wind damage with winds over 70 miles an hour at this point. And look, it's not over. This thing's going to continue to grow and continue to fan out and cause damaging winds all the way into 9 p.m. on Tuesday, uh, where we might see another little mesoscale convective system uh, forming over here in Iowa and meeting up with it. And once again, straight line damaging winds, straight line damaging winds. Anybody ahead of that uh, should be watching out for the uh, very real chance of damaging winds as we get into the uh, overnight hours on Tuesday. Now, of course, this is going to be fueled by CAPE, all right? Lots of convective energy out there. And then usually when the sun goes down, we lose that convective energy. And when the sun goes down, we are going to lose a lot of the energy that's responsible for making these storms. But it does look like they're holding on here at midnight all the way down into central Illinois and west central Indiana, okay? So big time storms possible here all the way through into the morning, 3 a.m. there, possibly moving into southern uh, sections of Illinois and Indiana. And then on the backside here in uh, Iowa and Missouri, we're just going to see a lot of leftover convection. A lot of that cape that didn't get eaten up by the uh, mesoscale convective system is just going to ignite overnight in the form of multicellular uh, severe weather and possibly just a big blob of rain. Okay, so flash flooding is going to be a uh, possibility there in Iowa and Missouri on uh, when early Wednesday morning as we go through. Okay, and then everything kind of clears out after that. Speaking of convective energy, like I said, there's a ton of it out there today. There's going to be over 4,000 joules of, per kilogram of cape out there in northern Illinois today. Uh, for those storms to feed off of. And then it just ramps right back up in a really impressive way for tomorrow. And once again, th this straight line damaging wind threat is gonna be high out here, especially if we actually see convective energy values over 5,000 in some of these areas. Man, those storms are gonna be strong. They're gonna have a very 
very strong straight line damaging winds. Uh, we are definitely going to see probably one of the most significant wind events of the year. So uh, definitely watch those cape levels. If that verifies tomorrow, that means that we are going to see a lot of strong winds. Okay. All right. Now we're zooming out to the whole United States here and we're going to look at what's going to happen over the next week or so. So obviously on Tuesday, we're watching this area up here as we have these storms coming through. We also have just storm after storm forming down here in the Pacific Ocean. Like this literally been a train of strong tropical storms down here, uh, south and west of Mexico, just moving west. Uh, none of these have really caused a lot of problems, but I'm telling you, it's been one of the more active Pacific tropical seasons that I've seen, especially this early in. I don't know if that's a sign of what we're getting ready to see in the Gulf of Mexico and then the Atlantic or not, but man, there's just storm after storm popping up down here. That's affecting our monsoon a lot over here in the Southwest. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I don't have much to say about it other than I haven't seen a model run that hasn't shown a storm down here in months. But anyways, as you can see, most of the United States is pretty quiet after we get past our, you know, big storm system that we're looking at now. Pretty much what's going to happen is we're going to enter this phase uh, where we have a slightly, slightly cooler air trying to move in <laughs> to the north central portion of the United States. Also, uh, areas of Washington and Oregon are going to cool off just a little bit. It's still going to be hot. We're still dealing with absolutely incredibly high temperatures down here in uh, California, Nevada, and Arizona. Uh, but over here, there's going to be this area where we have the warmer air right next to the little bit of cooler air. Well, once again, this isn't a huge boundary or anything, uh, but what that's going to do is it's going to spark off multiple days of isolated pop-up showers and thunderstorms from Maine to Pennsylvania to the coastal areas of the, the entire east coast of the United States, all the way through the Appalachian region and, of course, the deep south. Um, pretty much after we get past Wednesday, every single day, uh, it's going to get real hot, real humid, and there's possibly going to be a big thunderstorm that pops up, and we'll have some isolated severe weather threats out of that, and definitely some isolated flash flooding problems out of that. But, you know, that's the main story. I mean, really, there's not a lot going on out there. Look at that. We just have pop-up storms over and over again here in the southeast, and our focus is going to shift a little bit here on Saturday uh, to this little area right here. Check this out. Did you catch that? We've got a little, maybe a uh, tropical depression, tropical storm, trying to uh, do this little motion right here in the southeastern portion of the United States. Now, if this verifies, that's not gonna be a very problematic situation at all. If you live in Florida, you probably won't even notice it. Uh, all that's really gonna do is it's gonna bring even more moisture up here into the southeast and cause a lot of rain. And, and once again, scattered uh, showers and thunderstorms on a daily basis as we go all the way through Wednesday, August 18th, where this could be uh, rotating up here near Long Island. That right there doesn't show much of a storm, but I'm telling you, uh, the tropics are getting ready to heat up and I'm watching this very closely because uh, there's there's some things going on here that we need to pay attention to. All right, here we go. This is the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center. And as you can see, that big red blob there, we have a 70% chance of a cyclone forming in the next five days. And that's the storm that we were just looking at on the Euro that's trying to do that little motion right here. Here's the thing, all right? Here, here's what's got me a little bit concerned. This storm has been on the National Hurricane Center's uh, radar for a while now. Whenever it first started over here, we were looking at it possibly doing one of these motions, and then the models were showing it maybe doing one of these motions, and then the models showed it maybe doing one of these motions, and now the models are showing it doing this, okay? And that's a trend, okay? If that continues, what we may see is this. And that would be uh, probably a worst case scenario for this storm because the Gulf of Mexico right now is hot. It is just sitting bathwater. And um, if there's nothing else that impedes the growth of this storm, if this can make it just south of the islands here and come through a little window there between Yucatan and Cuba, we are going to see possibly uh, uh, the biggest storm we've seen this year blow up there in the Gulf of Mexico. Don't know if that's going to happen right now, but it is a possibility. Okay, remember, we started out over here. Now we're right here. Uh, the next step is possibly there. There. But, you know, it could just equal out and we see a, a weaker storm come up the East Coast there. So let's check out the Atlantic Basin on the GFS model. All right. So now we're looking at the GFS global model. We're looking at the whole Atlantic Ocean pretty much. And we're trying to see where cyclogenesis is happening. So we're looking at the precipitable water um, model here. And really, this is just going to help us see where that uh, rotation is occurring. So here's our storm. Looks like it's trying to intensify a little bit as it approaches Puerto Rico. Uh, if you live in Puerto Rico, watch out. Also, the Dominican Republic. 
Republic and Haiti probably going to get affected by this. But as you can see, the current path right now, um, if this goes over land as much as it does, it's going to weaken tremendously. OK, if this goes a little bit further north of the land or a little bit further south, it's going to you know have every opportunity to intensify. But land, even small islands just tear apart hurricanes. So that is uh, what we're seeing right now. But as you can see, as it gets closer to Florida there, uh, it enters some of that warmer water and we start to see a little bit of intensification there. OK, this is still a very weak storm. We're talking about a tropical storm here, uh, but that is what we're looking at as it goes all the way up into portions of the Appalachian Mountains. And then it kind of really gets torn apart by the Appalachian Mountains. But once again, uh, as of right now, it looks like the main threat here is just going to be a really high influx of moisture as that moves into the United States. we got a interesting area to watch here in the Gulf of Mexico as we go later on into the month, but that's really far out. We don't need to look at that a lot right now. What we're focused on is our storm right here. Okay. If that right there moves a little bit to the West, I think we're going to see a very uh, intense tropical storm, possibly even a hurricane affecting the U S. So we're going to watch that closely. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you so much for being here, for watching the videos, for, you know, just supporting, uh, especially our channel members. Guys, we're going to be doing a members only live stream here really soon within the next couple of days. So stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.